Thank you for joining us today. Today we'll be taking a look at Sage 100 Contractor with Alliance Solutions Group. My name is Tanya Eaney and I'll be taking you through the product. Alliance Solutions Group's vision is to be the premier provider of technology solutions for the construction industry. We've partnered with many products out there in the industry, but today we'll be focusing on Sage 100 Contractor. Let's take a look. You're looking at my Sage 100 desktop. When you first launch the program, the user does log in. That login controls what the user has access to. Looking at the top of the screen, you'll see we have different tabs which a user can navigate through workflow very easily with the steps that it takes to do their job. They also can set up shortcuts on their home screen to areas of the program they use frequently, as well as reports they run often. In addition, we have our traditional tree menu on the left-hand side where we, you see we cover quite a few of the tasks in the construction office. From all of your standard functions that are included as part of the core program, as well as some additional modules that you can add on, such as equipment, estimating, service, and inventory. But today, let's talk about the workflow, what a typical workflow would be in Stage 100 Contractor. We have a new project that we need to get started. We want to track the costs associated with that project through setting up a budget. We also want to look at commitments and manage our cost controls with commitments. We also need to track and manage change orders, as well as bill our clients. And then, of course, along the way, evaluate where our progress is by looking at different job cost reports. But let's first start with setting up our project. So I'm going to go into my job setup screen and pull up an existing job. When we look at the job screen, this is the starting point of a new project. This is where we set up the job information. We can also specify unique things about the project, such as if there's a requirement for certified payroll, retainage, we can specify this here. We also can put in the contract amount so we can run profitability reports later on. Throughout Sage, we're always going to have the ability to attach documents. These could be documents that are specific to the project, such as a contract or pictures, but I also can see documents related to the project from other areas of the system, such as I want to see all the documents that were attached to all the different change orders. I can easily get to that information from the screen. This is the place where I set up the job, adding in contacts for the job, maybe other project dates that are key and important for me to track. But this screen's also very helpful in being able to review information already set up about the job. I could quickly review the, pro the budget set up for this project by clicking on the budget button. I also could look at all the purchase orders that have been attached. Here's a log of those purchase orders, and just by double clicking, it drills me into the purchase order. I can drill in and see a log of contracts to my subcontractors, and again, a double click is going to take me into the subcontract to see the details for the subcontractor. I also could see a log of all my change orders, as well as what invoices I've sent out, payments I've received, and then just a general overall summary of my contract. Now that we've got our project set up, we can start entering different items for the project. The beginning part of any project is setting up a budget. The budget will be the beginning of my cost control for this project. I can set this budget up and break it down by cost codes. These cost codes can, are custom to you and your company and what you decide to set up. We can also further break out our budget by type of cost. Is it material? Is it labor? Is it subcontracted? This gives us a little bit more granular detail that we can cost. This cost budget could be created from an Excel spreadsheet where I copied and pasted this information in. It's very easy to copy and paste information into Sage 100 Contractor. As you see, I copied that column and now I've just pasted that information to this other column. I could do the same coming out of Excel. Or if I'm using the estimating module inside of Sage 100, I can create the budget directly from the estimate. 
But the estimate is, or the budget is the beginning of my cost control. Once I've set that budget up, I'm asking Sage to, Sage now knows to manage this job based on the budget. It will alert me if I'm exceeding the budget. It will also alert me if I'm coding costs to a budget category that doesn't exist on the budget. Now for further controls, I can choose to lock it down. And as long as I'm an administrator, I can unlock this budget, maybe revise it. But for everyone else in the company, they're gonna be driven to do change orders. So we can track the costs associated, we can track the changes associated with the budget and have an audit trail. So now that we have our budget set up, we could begin to run a budget versus job cost report. So I'm gonna pull up this basic report here in Sage. Here's the budget that I created originally. Here's change orders that have been recorded that are, that are part of, that change my budget and give me my revised budget. Here's my cost to date, what percentage of the budget I'm at, and what balance I have left. So if I want to drill down, I can do so right from the screen, just by clicking on the drill down button. By double clicking, it drills me into the transactional information. I get a list of all the transactions. Maybe I want to drill in further and see this specific transaction that piques my interest. I can then drill down all the way back to my source. Here I see my accounts payable invoice that was entered in. And if I had an attachment, I can view the attachment just with a double click. So I was able to go from that high level report all the way down to the details without having to exit that report and go someplace else. Then I can just step my way back up to the original report, pick another category that I may want to review and drill back down into it. Now that we have our budget set up, why don't we review some commitments? I can do purchase orders and I can create some contract commitments inside of Sage. So depending on what I'm working on, I may want to start with creating some orders for materials and I can do that through purchase orders. So with my purchase orders, Here's where I can list out the materials that I'm ordering. This could have come from the estimating module if I'm using it, or I can copy and paste this information in or key it in. This purchase order is referencing the vendor I'm purchasing the materials from, what job, and all of my details, along with each line item can be tied back to a cost code. Now throughout stage, we saw a couple of places we could drill down. I can also drill down when I get into these entry screens. Perhaps I wanna know more information about my vendor. When's the last time we've paid them? How many invoices, what, what do we owe them? What's our balance? By drilling back into my vendor screen, I can click on my open invoices button and see the log of all the open AP invoices for this vendor. I also could see paid invoices as well as other purchase orders. I also could drill back into my job if I had a question on the project. Now Sage is gonna to wanna to match our purchase order to our invoice. So when we receive a bill from our supplier, we can match it up with our purchase order, making sure that we don't exceed the purchase order amount. Here we see what we've received to date. And if I wanna know more details on that, I click on invoices and I get those details. Again, I could drill back into that invoice if I chose to. Now we can also set up cost controls and warnings right from this purchase order screen because when I'm starting the purchase order, I wanna know if I'm gonna exceed my budget from the beginning. And here on this budget warning setting, I can set up that information. These are global settings that I can set up where it will warn me when I go to enter the invoice, the purchase order. Now that I've got my purchase order set up, I can go to create my subcontracts. So my subcontracts are similar to my purchase order, except for therefore my subcontractors. The biggest difference is, is that they can track retainage and they don't have unitary value. They're just a lump sum. So again, here's my subcontract for this Harris project, as well as who the vendor is. Now, maybe I wanna know more about that subcontractor. Is there insurance current, et cetera? I can drill back into this subcontract, click on the certificates, and now I can see all the insurance information. When does their uh, workers' comp expire? I can record things like that. Workers' comp, when I received it, and when it's set to expire. 
what do I want Sage to do? Do I want to warn me? Do I want to stop me from paying them if it is expired? As a user, you can set up these warnings yourself. From this subcontract screen, we can let's see there's many line items listed. We're able to see the original contract, what changes have occurred that's going to be driven from our change orders that we're going to look at next, as well as what our sub has invoiced me. So as a snapshot, I'm able to quickly tell what's going on with this contract, what was originally contracted, what changes, what the invoiced amount was and remaining. I can also see details as whether those are the invoices that I've received including the retainage that's been withheld, or the changes to subcontract from subcontract, the changes from change orders. We also can attach documents. There could be correspondence about this project. There also could be pictures or documents. They all can be attached, so everything I need to, to review this subcontract is all here in one spot. Now that we've started to issue some subcontracts and purchase orders in the system, we can get even more detailed job cost reports. This job cost report incorporates my budget and changes as we looked at already, plus my cost to date, what's incurred in the past, but what is also I'm planning to spend. So this is my committed cost, and this is coming directly from my purchase orders and subcontracts. I also can see my remaining budget, what I've got left to spend in each category. If I need to drill down to get to that information, I can. Just a double click will take me into the details of the committed cost or the cost to complete. So now our project is moving along. We've issued purchase orders and subcontracts. We've been tracking our cost against our budget. We may start to run into some changes that we need to address. So let's go look at the change orders. And Sage 100 Contractor, Sage keeps it simple. The change request and change order are all in one screen. When I create this change order for a project, I have the ability to keep up with my own numbering system for my clients, but Sage is gonna maintain its own numbering system so you have the correct sequential order. The status is gonna be what drives this change into the project. When we first create the change, it defaults to an open status, meaning it's not been approved, but we haven't rejected it yet. It's more of a change request and giving me visibility of the change. Now, once it's approved and I mark it as approved, that's when it pushes all the changes into the project. It updates the budget, it modifies the subcontractor if it's one's involved, it also updates our budget. Let's take a look at that. The second half of the screen is the details of this change request slash change order. This first tab is the changes to the client. So it's the changes in their contract. I have a place to put in some overhead and profit if I wish Sage to calculate that. Sage can also create a change order document that looks like this. And this as well as other forms in Sage can be modified. So here's our change to our client for their project for this amount. And then it shows the changes to their contract at the bottom. Now the second tab is how does this change their, our budget and any subs involved? This is where I can document the changes to our cost budget, as well as any subcontractors are involved in what that change is. Now with Sage, I can use these tabs independently. I may just have a change to the budget that I wish to document. I may have a change to a subcontractor, like a back charge that one subcontractor is doing work and another sub's paying for it. Or I may have a straight change just to my contract. I can use both these tabs together or independently. And again, once I've marked it approved, then it's gonna push this change to my budget, these changes to these subcontractors, as well as the change to my client on the screen. So now that we've started to issue some change orders, it may be time to bill our client. Sage has many options for billing, whether it's a simple invoice, whether it's time and material billing, unitary billing, or loan draws, but most commonly is progress billing. My progress billing screen is my worksheet where I can fill in my schedule of values initially and then begin to come through 
each billing cycle and record what percent complete I am. By putting in the percentage complete, it calculates the current amount to bill. Now this example I pulled, it's my second billing. So I have some previous amount that I've already billed for. This current amount, I see a change order that has been added. Now change orders can be updated on this billing by pulling in any new approved change orders since the last billing. Stage will also calculate retainage if you've got retainage set up. So once you've updated your worksheet, you're ready to print your billing. Now we're just view viewing our out of the box billing format, but this format can be modified to look like anything you need it to. This is similar to the AIA G702 summary page, and our second page is similar to the G703 page. This, like all my forms, I can choose to email directly out of here or I could send it out to Excel or Word. Now that my billing is done, I can have Sage create an invoice for this billing. In some systems, I've got to create my billing in one place and do, do my invoice in another. With Sage, I simply just ask it to post this billing and it generates my receivable invoice. If I then come over into my aging reports, we'll see what that billing looks like, including the breakout for retainage. Sage manages retainage by tagging it and then therefore displaying it separately. So when I look at my aging reports, I see my original invoice amount, what was in retainage, and then the balance that's currently due. It will hold the retainage in a separate column until you release the retainage. Then it will begin to let you age it as well as bill for it. So we've walked through the typical workflow of a project. We set up a new project, we looked at the cost budget, we created purchase orders and subcontracts to manage our commitments. We also tracked some change orders as well as did a billing. We looked at a couple reports, and a final report I like to show is our work in progress report, which is pretty, pretty typically created in Excel for most contractors. But here in Sage, we're able to generate it with a click of a button because we're managing all these things inside of the product. We've created the budget so that we can pull the budget in here. We're entering our cost in this one system. We also are doing our billing out of here, therefore creating our over or under billing amount. Now this report could easily be sent out to Excel. I'll just take this out to Excel here. When it's out in Excel, it's formatted nicely, but it also brings out the formulas from the original report. So if I was to send this on to another user, they would know how it was calculated. Now this report may be something you wanna generate on a regular basis. And as we've talked about, we could email it, we could send it to Excel, but we also can schedule it. The reports that we like, we can schedule to be emailed. We can pick the users we want it to be emailed to. We could also pick how often we want it to be emailed and assign it a subject. Once we've done that, we can save it. And then now every Tuesday at 5 a.m., my users are gonna get a copy of this report as a PDF in their inbox, keeping them up to date with what's going on and saving me from having to generate it. So before we leave, I just wanna to touch on our dashboard. With Sage 100 Contractor, this really pulls everything together in one place. With Sage 100 Contractor, I'm able to see what jobs are under build, a summary of my financials, as well as review change orders that have not been approved yet. I hope this has been a helpful overview of Stage 100 Contractor. For more information, contact us at Alliance Solutions Group. Thank you.